Hey everyone, and welcome back to this modding spotlight video featuring the Eo Kakaria, a member of the Kakarodontosaurus today family. <laughs> so that means we now have the Giga, the Kircher, the Yakacanthosaurus, the Maraxes, and now the Eo Kakaria. It's a very popular genus I've noticed, although it's really cool to see everyone take their own individual specialized versions of each one rather than making, you know, just a bunch of Giga clones. It's cool seeing like how they all vary. So the Eero Kakaria was made by Tristan, and with the lack of a dossier but checking the mod description, it seems to be a much larger, beefier aloe by the sounds of it. And in fact, it even shares the same spawn locations as aloes. So as always, first things first, I'm gonna go find my first one in the wild. Ooh, so I see a whole bunch of aloes already. Uh, two sets in fact, then two spawns at each other, but it looks like that they are only just aloes. One thing I'm very curious about is if they will replace aloe spawns or spawn alongside them, since an aloe pack spawns in three. Could I see two aloes in the Eo Karakaria? Or will it be different? Well, that's uh, always a sight to see, isn't it? <laughs> Never gets old. Okay, got another pack of aloes. Oh, I think I found one. Did I find one? Yes, I finally found one. A Eo Karakaria. Right, this has taken me about 15 minutes of searching, which isn't too bad, all things considered. It took longer for me to travel from one aloe hotspot to the other. So I went from, let's just quickly have a look. So from around down here, as the rivers have lots and lots of aloes, it took me longer to go from down here all the way to up here than to, you know, physically check the spawns. So I'd say that on a flyer or a more versatile uh, creature, you would have a much easier time finding it. So, there it is, and looking very peaceful. What I'm noticing is ignoring the uh, local wildlife. Stat-wise, for a level wild, or for a wild level 25, about a thousand health, about 120% damage, um, and it's still attacking my like dodeck. Let's see how much of a threat you are in the wild. I have a tamed level 100 Phyla. It does not do a bleed. Alright, so definitely not very scary. Gave me an aloe brain. Interesting. That's very, very interesting. So it makes sense for a creature that would, that would uh, spawn alongside or replace aloe spawns. It makes sense to give an aloe brain. So I do quite like that. Not as scary as, as I expected, which I'm very glad about because as it shares aloe spawns. Oh, that's an alpha version. <laughs> as it shares aloe spawns, you could encounter these very early in the early game. Oh, wait. Is that a. It's a baby alpha. I'm not sure that's supposed to happen. I will report that to Tristan. I don't think it's supposed to have a baby. Oh no, now this raises all sorts of questions. Are you aggroing? Yes, you are aggroing. Okay. Okay, well, this is definitely an interesting fight. Thankfully, I'm on a filer so I can bleed it to death. So I'm on a primitive filer or a primitive saddle. It is doing a fair bit of damage to me, but so far it seems like that I can. Oh, actually, I can just track it, can't I? Yeah, I can handle it quite nicely. Level 20. Oh, dude. I... <laughs> There's no way I can get the baby alpha. I'm 100% sure it's a bug. Okay, but it's good to know, though, that this could seriously be a threat. This alpha, even at level 20, is definitely not something to scoff at. And I keep getting stuck in this hitbox. Oh, I'm really getting stuck in this hitbox. Oh, this is dodgy. Oh, goodness. I am currently stuck inside it. Don't think that's supposed to be the case. Okay, well, let's just kill this first. Okay, just gonna heal myself while it's taking bleed damage. There we go. Okay, it died. Right, I really, really don't think that's supposed to happen. But from that, I did get myself a whole bunch of saddles. That was very, very rewarding. Wow, I got an ascendant of the armored saddle. So let's... Okay, so while we're here, let's talk about the saddles. So... Uh, the earliest variant is unlocked at level 55, and there are attachments to this, so the leather helm attachment and the leather saddle attachment. Um, I think it does give extra armor. It says it's got a little bit of armor. That's very, very interesting. And then at level 69, we have the armored saddle attachment. So it's an attachment. Interesting. Uh, let's just quickly check. Yeah, yeah, that is all attachments. Okay, we'll experiment more with that in a bit. I have to find out. I'm sure all of us are begging this question, aren't we? Uh, mm. <laughs> Alright. I mean... Let's 
let's just put that one to a side. <laughs> Oh, would you look at that? There's another Alpha Eocarcaria. So these don't seem to be particularly rare. Either I'm just getting very lucky slash unlucky. I am in aloe hotspots, so I suppose aloes themselves are a common spawn. If these are related to them, then they may also be a common spawn. Okay, we'll just chalk it off as confirmation bias. But definitely keep an eye out when you're playing with this mod. Oh, is that a trio of them? Oh, so that's terrifying. Right, we've got a level 100 right there. Oh, cover up. We've got a level 100 right there, a level 90 there, and a level 25. There's a whole pack of them. So they can spawn as a pack in the wild. I am noticing so far in my few encounters that the Eocarcaria does not spawn alongside aloes, which I'm kind of glad about. They do also seem to have a much lesser aggro range than aloes and other such creatures. That is a bunch of... Is that an Alpha Raptor? There might actually be an Alpha Raptor. That's fine. Okay, so... The way you tame these, and I'm not sure I want to tame with all three of them there, is a passive tame. Right, let's just put you on passive as well. So, to passive tame these guys, what you're going to need are shrooms. Shrooms are unlockable and craftable level 55, which compared to the saddle, yeah, also 55. These require... Blood packs, oil, rare mushrooms, water, sap, rare flowers, and narcotics. And I'm assuming in your inventory? Hold up one second. Do you need water as well? That's... ooh. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And for the record, uh, they are about a four and a half, five hour spoil time, and they are extended in your inventory. Uh, in your dino's <laughs> inventory, so they do get that bonus. Oh, what was that? That was a galley. Okay then, so... Oh, look at that. So I am currently in ghillie. So this is a thing. They're a passer tame and I'm in full ghillie. That is menacing. Right, and I'm noticing that none of them seem to have any babies, I don't think. So I... Mmm, this is just very... unpleasant. <laughs> I just have to do it. Okay. Oh, God. So... Ooh. One of you passitain them, and there is a chance that it will annoy them. So there's a, I think it's a 50-50 chance that it will just piss them off, or that they'll take the food and they'll be happy. But if you do piss them off, they'll be aggroed for, I think it's a 30 seconds. Did I do tall ball to it? Wait, hold on. Let's just quickly track that. Taming progress, so 26% taming, 99% uh, effectiveness. But it had a purple, yeah, so it's got tall ball. Interesting. Okay, well, they don't seem to be aggroed anymore, but they are just running around causing problems. Very, very interesting. I mean, could I just go... Oh, they are running around all over the place. It could be that they're just following the one I initiated the team on. Oh, this is... Very, very interesting. They are so intimidating. Right, let's just do another one then quickly. Run away! Oh god, they're definitely angry, they're definitely angry. <laughs> this is interesting. Oh, that Bronto's pissed, which means I might not get my mount. I got my mount. Oh, they're doing a bleed attack. They, these are giant aloes. They are definitely giant aloes, and I'm stuck in their hitbox. This, okay. All right, all right. So there's a couple of little things that need fixing. This is for sure. Oh, and I lost all my team of progress on the other one. Okay. So there is a couple of little issues. I'm completely stuck in a hitbox as I got out now, but that is a thing to consider. So you might have to play this either very safe. You might have to trap them. Hmm. So far in those two feeds, I said this is a thrilling team. Very, very fun and scary. But currently, as of this moment of release, a little bit janky. The fact that I lost all that effectiveness though really sucks. I guess it causes them to go in a frenzy and attack everything nearby. Yeah, I guess it attacks everything nearby. So, thinking about it, a level 55, uh, once we run Neo, oh, level 90, Quetzal is 76. Mmm, this is really kind of savage. You'd have to put in some proper effort to secure a safe team. Okay, so I did try to break apart the pack of Eokakaria, and not only are they really threatening, but they also got uh, quite owned by Brontos, Stegos. There's also an Alpha Eokakaria that apparently spawned next to them as well, so that just made the entire ordeal 
all the more messy. So my advice is that when you go out looking to tame some, either find a way to get a solo one by itself or seclude it from its others, or have a creature that is much more prepared than the Thalicaleo. It's safe to say that the primitive saddle Thalicaleo is not enough for a pack of Eokokaria. They sting. So, since I want to actually tell you about the mod, rather than trying to think of the best taming strategies, because let's face it, there's smart people out there, <laughs> I want to talk to you about the actual Eokokaria itself. And we know it's a passive tame, it's a 50-50 as to whether or not the dino will actually attack you or not, and, you know, again, typical passive tame, wear full ghillie, feed at your shrooms, and wish for the best, and hope you don't get absolutely destroyed. So, let us check out what a Tamed 150 can do. So first of all, let's put on that saddle then. Ooh, the saddle, the primitive saddle design is really, really nice. I'm loving that people lately are doing like these little, um, those little cloth rolls in the back there, like a little satchel, it's really, really nice actually. In fact, uh, before we do anything else, I would like to check out these attachments. Oh, in fact, it's even got a head, feet, and torso in costume. And a bunch of mushrooms. Okay, there's a whole bunch of things going on with this one. So, armored, armored, uh, let's see. We've got a leather attachment here, which I can put in the torso. Oh, cool. So a lot of you probably already seen this in the wildcard trailer, but I just want to go ahead and show it here anyway. So it gives it a really nice padded leather armor, kind of everywhere actually, like a bit around the head, uh, like the back of the head, the thighs, the rear, the tail. That looks really, really cool. So this here was the leather saddle attachment. There's also the leather helm attachment, which goes in the head slot, as you'd expect. Oh, hey, that's really, really cool. Ah, oh, so it gives like a bit of a mask. Not literally, but you know, it looks like one. And this is all dyeable, by the way. You can quite happily dye this, like just choose whichever colors you want and really have fun with it. Oh, there's a Rex next to me. And we do also have the armored one. I looted a whole bunch of armored attachments from that alpha earlier. I guess we'll find out in a moment. So how do you actually fare in a battle? Did 168 damage. This is a fresh 150, tamed. And what level is this Rex actually? Level 45. Okay, so it's got a nice attack speed. It's decent. Quite a nice animation as well. I do like the way it can turn on the dime also. In fact, it seems like I'm taking extremely little damage, probably just to the attachments. Oh, right, I should tr try other attacks. So right click is a bit of a headbutt. Does that do torpor? No torpor. Very interesting. Whee! Little baby right there. C attack is a cosmetic roar. Oh, it's a really cool one, actually. Oh, I like that. I like the way he actually moves his arms out as well. Oh, that was a much more dramatic one. Is it my imagination or is there two different types? I think it's my imagination. Still very, very cool. Now, I believe I've right to control. Oh, uh, I think that was coincidence. Oh, okay. It really was angry at that Rex corpse. I thought right to control. Allow it to sit. Oh, actually it does. Okay, I'm not sure why it's dismantling me. Like, it could be a thing in my bindings, so I'll have to check. But right to control allows it to sit and actually gives it a bit of a healing buff. And that is really, really cute. Oh, that is really, really cute. Oh, fantastic. And it gets up after a while as well. So it does give it a bit of a healing buff. Um, rapid regeneration. Oh, that's another point actually. So four and a half thousand health, 400% uh, melee damage. Uh, very lightweight, very light stamina. Actually, overall, this is quite a lightweight dino. And this, the the uh, the armored one, I never put on the armored one, did I? So that would go into this segment here. And oh, that's just like a much nicer looking. It's the same model as before, same as the leather one, but just looks a bit more reinforced now. The mushrooms. Let's look at these mushrooms then. So it is passively creating its own mushrooms, including rare mushrooms, which is quite nice. And a blue one. You feel like heads after touching this, ingesting would be dangerous. I think these are just ingredients. So for the actual stews themselves. Attack mushroom stew, double, double, toil and travel, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. This is a lovely mushroom brew, healthy syrup to boost your creature attack damage. <laughs> That's interesting. A defense one. Yeah, which increases our defense. Okay. Uh, this health mushroom one to boost your creature's health regeneration and mushroom to boost your movement speed. Which obviously in ASA, movement speed was outright removed on everything. So 
that's an interesting workaround for those who really can't live without it, but also like maybe you're not in control of your server settings or maybe, I don't know, like whatever reason. Yeah, you got your alternative there. Uh, is that capped? Oh, these have, these have very, very long spoil times. Okay, so let's play a bit more of the attack zone. So left click is bite, right click is a headbutt, <laughs> which does do a bit of a knockback. Interesting. So the C, yep, of course, is the raw. X, ooh. Okay, I'm assuming, what, hold on, before I assume, okay. If I'm in a pack, uh, since this is like paired off of aloes, if I'm in a pack, the X attack is probably a bleed. I'll test that in a bit. And again, right control, despite the dismount, is it's healing. Oh, do not attempt to move while it's healing. Can I cancel this? I can, just hit right control again, good to know. Oh, and left control. Oh, left control does a very cool spin attack. Double hit, does much higher damage. And it kind of drifts while doing it. Hold on. Let's get away from you for a second. I like how it actually drifts forward just slightly. That's really nice. Oh, it's the little things every now and then. It really is the little things. Because sometimes, as you're just casually meleeing a creature, it will just kind of knock back a bit more each time. So, like, hold on. You know, little, little tiny knockbacks. It can build up, especially on smaller creatures. So the fact that you can just catch up as you're doing your attack is really cool and it does a bleed that did do a bleed interesting oh right is another raw oh not right sorry r <laughs> so r is another cosmetic raw wow and i'm not sure what other key binds to breast to be honest <laughs> so the listed attacks are bite bash headbutt and tail swing and it does mention the raw and the uh you know the sitting animation <laughs> wow now, one thing that is very interesting regarding the Eoka Carrier is that not only are they a pack dino, but they are a pack dino with a bonus of five, not three like the Aloe. So you can have up to five of these bad boys because like, I'm currently the pack leader. And I'm very, very curious as to what kind of damage these can do. Now, just imagine for a second that they're saddles. Imagine them all in different colors. You could really have a lot of fun with this. And I want to go ahead and send you all over to that Bronto over there. Oh god, and get stuck inside you. <laughs> In terms of swimming, you know, decent swimmers. It's not, it's, it's a very slow swimmer. No, this is really, really slow. But it's fine, you can't have everything. Every now and then it's acceptable. Um, although that one is kind of confused. Oh, they're all confused. But they're very majestic. I will give them that. 175 damage. These are all 150s. Zero uh, leveling into melee. Or any stats for that matter, or primitive saddles. They are automatically bleeding. They do the bleed, not just the alpha. I'm just gonna sit here and admire. Can I like? Does it all do like a buff in any way? No, but they did destroy that. I'm just gonna diplo. Screw diplos. Oh wow. Yeah, they shred. They really, really shred. I do want to note. Bit of an odd one. I do like how silent they are. They've got like a nice crunchy bite and that's it. Because I think you'd have like up to five of these. They are not that noisy. And I'm very glad because things like aloes and carnos, they can be just obnoxiously loud. I'm very, very glad that Tristan's elected to make this one a lot easier on the ears. You're not punished for having so many of them as they were designed to be. So now the next obvious choice is to have a 150 Alpha and see how we fare in this kind of fight. Oh god, look at him go. This feels a little bit unfair and again, they will have primitive saddles, so it's just mate boost and pack bonus. In fact, I'm not actually seeing a pack bonus. Um, maybe I have like other players mounting them. <laughs> This this noise. Okay, I'll take it back about the noise. It's not that bad actually, but it is very amusing the sounds right now. Uh, the lack of movement is kind of interesting that none of them are, you know, they're all just staying put. Okay, nearly done, nearly done. There you go. Right, so how is all of your health after that? Let's have a look then. So you are, yep, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're, yeah, really barely scratch on any of them. Uh, let's see, what did you got? Oh, in fact, the loot is right there. Uh, so we got some foot armor. Interesting, because I can't make foot, let me double check. 
Oh, you can. Oh, it's zero. Oh, that's a little bit... Okay, okay, I don't have a little thing to report. It's fine, it's fine, it happens. Um, interesting. Well, at least you can loot it there and a foot armor. Oh, it's cute! I like that! I mean, this is so cool. It's so nice to have a proper big armored dino. This is awesome. I would really love to see this just more throughout the game. Armor attachments, such a lovely idea. Whoa, you... That was obviously a headshot. <laughs> wow. Screw that raptor in particular. <laughs> But as it's gonna say though, I would love to see more of this armor feature concept in more mods, in more dinos, in base arc. Oh my god, <laughs> these crits, dude. Oh, and I even got an ascendant saddle, just a saddle outright, so you can get. Oh, it... okay, so it did take off all the attachments, which I guess makes sense. So you can get every single type of uh, saddle and attachment from the alphas. And two for two kill seems to be a hundred percent drop chance. Might not be, but it seems to be you know, in my favour so far. Okay, so one thing I'm very interested to find out is can these be taken to boss fights and how will it go? So, I have now given them all imprints and I've also spawned in the necessary items to make these stews. I want to see how these stews perform on the alpha, on the pack leader, once I get uh, just one more. I require 20. So for this, I'm going to try and do the Megapithecus boss encounter. These are all fully imprinted now. Still no level. Where are you going? That is truly unfortunate. Okay. All right. <laughs> Arc. Okay. Well, it's fine. We at least have... We, we, we got a mate boost. Let's just see how the mate boost does, I suppose. And I am about to make these stews. Which are going to take a long time to craft. Oh, oh, you know what? I don't think we really stand a chance on this. Let me just quickly get a... Oh, you know what? I can't get a healing buff because if I dismount, it'll kill me. <laughs> so I am taking very, very little damage. But yeah, my guy's definitely dying. He's dead, of course. Made sense. Truly unfortunate that they all would just fly off the edge like that. But I am surviving longer than I have any right to. Oh, hold on. We got the stews. Let's chuck all these stews on quickly. There was another one. Yep, yeah, all the stews. So, I am noticeably faster. These all last for quite a long time. We've got rapid regeneration. Oh, yo, oh, I am speedy. I am speed. I am regenerating about 10 HP per second. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I'm going to put you on follow. There's still one more alive, but that's going to get to me. Let's just run away with this extra speed. Get all the way over here. Did a little cheeky dismount for the heal. There you go. So now you've got the extra rapid regeneration. Oh, but you're a little bit stuck. You'll wait for the animation to finish first. That Eo Kakari is still stuck over there. This is a very dangerous place to be fighting, but I want to give it a go nonetheless. I am doing... Oh, bye. I am doing very little damage. Yeah, so I've lost all my bonuses. Well, I lost a mate boost, but I still have my pack bonus. I'm still the alpha. Oh, but I am out of stamina. I am out of stamina. Okay, so you're not going to kill a boss with <laughs> just one of these, which wasn't really the thing I wanted to test in the first place. But I will say that I am surviving much longer than I expected, you know, due to all the armor. Or in fact, my... Uh, cool. It's just a UI glitch. They don't actually break. Great. Excellent. I know I'm dying. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I've got loads of extra armor. Um... I've got my buffs, but yeah, obviously this is going to happen. <laughs> if only they all didn't bloody fly off a cliff. Yeah, kill me. Okay, thanks. So, my closing thoughts for the Eo Kakaria is that overall, I do really like this one. I think it's another good addition to the game. I think Tristan had a very lovely idea and really nice execution. Little bit jank in a couple of places, could use a little bit of polish. Particularly, the hitboxes were definitely more of an issue, and every now and then it felt like that the walking animations were just kind of halting on the wild ones, on the AI pathing. But again, these are all just things to do with polish, and that can get fixed over time. Otherwise, I think the actual physical attacks, the way it rides, the way it moves around, it's got a really nice variety of attacks in its toolkit, and they all feel fun and satisfying to use. Uh, the scaling, I think it all feels really good. I also had to commend Tristan on the reminder that pack AI exists, because I don't know about you, but me personally, things like aloes and direwolves were so miserable in Arc Survival Evolved that I just completely wrote them off, mainly due to their pathing. 
And in ASA, with the improved pathing, even though my Eokokaris did kind of yeet off a couple of times, it's still better, well, <laughs> not Megapithecus, but it's still better than anything in ASC. So this is a nice reminder that, hey, pack dinos, go play with, go play with them, go have fun again. I do think that for the actual taming and acquisition of the Eokokaria, it is surprisingly hard for where they are in the food chain. And the recipe might be just a little bit on the expensive side, but I do like how it utilizes resources that kind of aren't really used a ton, particularly the blood packs and the sap. Encourages a bit more gameplay diversity, and I do think that the reward is very much worth it in the end. These are scaled to be in between Aloe and Rex tier, and I think it's done a good job of creating that. I also think the design is really nice as someone who is so used to vanilla creatures and therefore things like the Eokokari and the Maraxis is new to my general periphery and when I'm playing the game I kind of get things mixed up a little bit. I still think Tristan's done a very good job of making the Eokokari stand out. His face is very eye-catching and same with Big Gallifrey as Maraxis, the glow is also very eye-catching so in both scenarios if you're not used to having lots of modded creatures these are really good visual telling points to tell you hey this is what this is instead of people accidentally creating similar creatures and getting mixed up. I like how these are all standing out for themselves and it's a direction that I really hope that all modders will continue to embrace because I think it's much better for the player base when every creature does have its own unique identity, not just in terms of abilities, but particularly its visuals as well. Just because they're the same genus, it doesn't mean they have to look the exact same. So yeah, overall, definitely a nice addition. Really nicely done, Tristan. Thank you for this. I hope you all enjoyed as well. As always, you can find the mod ID in the screen now or in the video description down below. It is available for crossplay and changes are being made immediately. Just of course, Curse Forge has to take the very slow process of approving them. <laughs> but fixes are already on the way, especially for the baby alpha. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you all again in the next spotlight. Cheers.